Okay, good morning class. So we're doing the grade 10, paper 1. November 2021. The St. Susie Gods High School paper. Okay, so this was last year's uh, learners who wrote this paper. It was out of 125 marks for two and a half hours. All right, so let's go with it. We go straight into it. Question one. We are told, given the expression P of X is equal to the, f the square root of uh, 5 over X minus 2, for which values of X will P of X be undefined? So when would this be undefined is when the denominator is equal to 0. Not so. So if you look at the denominator here, it's going to be x minus 2. So it's x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 2. So the, for that value of x, it will be undefined. You remember, undefined is when the denominator is equal to 0. Then. Okay. Let's go to the next question. The next question says, factorize the following expression fully. So if we look at the first two terms, there's nothing can factorize here. However, the next two terms we can have y that's a common factor, so it's 1 minus x. I'll put a bracket around here and don't change the value of n. So what I do now is I swap that around to make it look the same as the first bracket. We swap that around and negative comes out. So it's negative y into x minus 1. We then have x minus 1 as a common factor. If I take that out, I'm left 1 minus. Okay. The next question is uh, two one point two point two. You got four y squared minus sixteen. So what type what type factorization first? Common factor. So it's four into y squared minus four. Now we're gonna do dots, difference of two squares. So it's gonna be y plus two, y minus two. If you had gone straight to the fact that I do to dots here, or um, the difference of two squares, then you had to, have to take up two as a common factor in each bracket then after as well. Yeah. Don't forget that. 1.3 we are told. Simplify the following expression fully. So we're going to factorize the numerator. These are common factors, so it's 1 minus x over the trinomial. Product lines is 1 and 1, 1 and 2. Our signs, both is going to be the same, which is minus in this case. Okay. Is 1 minus x the same as x minus 1? No. So I swap this around, negative comes out. There's no sign here, it's going to make that positive and negative. So it's negative 3 into x minus 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 2. x minus 1 is a common factor, so I'm left with negative 3 over x minus 2. Okay, the next question. In 1.3.2, we've got x cubed minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so what do we notice here? It's the sub difference of cubes. So we take out x minus 1 as a common factor. And now, um, as your first factor, so the cube root of x cubed is x, the cube root of 1 is 1, and the minus between, so it's the difference of cubes. So you square the first term, it's x squared, that's negative, so there's positive, x times 1 is x, and the last term squared. Over, and as you can see, that bracket and this here is the same, so of course it can't factorize. That cancels. It gives you an answer, x minus 1. Okay. That's some. Next one. So here we're going to break up the basis in products of its prime factors. So 16, we put 16 equals shift. Factorize. Uh, that 
bottleneck, so it's 2 to the 4, raised to negative x, times 12, we do it on the same account, it's going to be 2 squared times 3, so it's 3x, 4 came in at nest, 2 squared. Now this step is not needed, okay, if you are um, comfortable enough to do it without that step, you can do it, there's no mark allocated to this. Okay. The mark comes in the next step. So it's 2 to the minus 4x times 2 to the 2x plus 2 times 3 to the x plus 1 over 3 to the x times th uh, 2 to the minus 2x. Remember, we multiply the exponent in there. Okay. This one. But remember, when we're multiplying it, bases are the same. We add the powers. When we divide, we subtract the powers. So it's going to be 2 to the minus 4 x plus 2 x plus 2 plus 2 x times now we go with the 3 only with the uh, exponents on the base of 3 going to be brought together so it's 3 to the x plus 1 minus x that gives us 2 that of course cancels squared times 3 that cancels leaves you with 2 squared of course is 4 times 3 and 4 times 3 is 12. Is that correct? Just stop me when I make a mistake. I don't understand. The next question says, given that m is equal to x into x minus y all squared, determine the value of m if x, x times x squared is equal to 4 and x cubed minus 2x squared y is equal to 3. So of course, I we'll simplify that, get rid of the brackets and the square and all of those things. So m is simply equal to x into binomial squared, gives you x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Then I multiply the x in, gives you x cubed minus um, 2x squared y plus xy squared. Now you see that x cubed minus 2x squared y is equal to 3. Whilst, so that is 3, whilst xy squared is equal to 4. Which gave me an answer? 7. Okay. And it basically brings us to the end of question 1. Now we're looking at question 2. The first question says solve for x without the use of a calculator. So I'll make sure that a calculator. So firstly, would we divide by x here? No. We never divide by x. Otherwise, we will be losing a solution. So if they get over the equal sign, it becomes x cubed minus 9x is equal to 0. So what can be done now? We're taking the difference of 2 squares. So it's x squared minus 9. The difference of 2 squares is so x plus 3. x minus 3 is equal to 0 x equal to 0 or x plus 3 is equal to 0 so x is minus 3 or x minus 3 is equal to 0 so x is equal to 3. The next one 2.1.2 so that will be 3x 3 over 4 equal to 81. So I divide by 3 both sides. So that's going to give you x3 over 4 is equal to now 81 over 3 is 27. Not so. Which is 3 cubed. So I raise both sides to its reciprocal exponent there. Which now gives us x is equal to, and that's what I want. 3 is cancelled, 3 to the 4, which is indeed 81. Next one, 2.2, it says, given that uh, v is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed minus r cubed. Make lowercase r the subject of the formula. So what do we do first? One of two things, you can either multiply out or I could have divided by 4 over 3 pi. I'm going to do both ways. So the volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed minus 4 over 3 r cubed. Remember, 
we want um, all the cells to go to the front. But they get to the left and the other one to the right. So it'll be 4 over 3 r cubed is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed minus v. Okay. So what we do now is we divide both sides by 4 over 3. Okay. So that gives me r cubed is equal to 1 divided by 4 over 3 is 3 over 4 into 4 over 3 pi r cubed minus v. Now do I get r on its own? We take the cube root both sides. It simply give us r is equal to the cube root of 3 over 4 into 4 over 3 pi r cubed minus v. Or you can uh, multiply the 3 over 4 into the brain. Okay, for no extra marks. Of course, you see there's another way of doing it. You could have divided first by 4 over 3 pi. Okay. Divide both sides by 4 over 3 pi. To get rid of the bracket. Remember there's a 1 in front of that. So it's simply going to be 3 over 4 v over pi. Is equal to, that cancels, r cubed minus lowercase r. Make the get to the left, or the other one to the right. So r cubed is equal to r minus 3 over 4, v over pi. And we get r on its own, and take the cube root both sides. Okay? So that's going to give you the cube root of um, r a cube minus, um, this could be written as 3 over 4 v pi, and that those two answers are the same thing. Okay? Exactly the same. When we multiply the out, you'll see you get the same thing. But again, you don't need to, so there's no uh, marks allocated to that. The next question it says, Solve for x. If in the first case, right, so what do we do first? Multiply the same. So what do we get? We get 6 minus 9x, it must be greater than or equal to 15. So negative 9x is greater or equal to 15 minus 6, which is 9. Divide by negative 1, the inequality swaps around. Okay, divide by negative 9, sorry. Inequality swaps out. That's the first one. The next one says, hence represent the answer equation 2.2.1 on the number 9. So you've got your negative 1, and this is your x bar, your x axis. Do you have a closed or open circle at negative 1? Closed. Why? Because of the equal sign. So read the inequality, x must be less than or equal to negative. Okay. 2.4, simultaneous equations. There's one of two ways I can do this, either by elimination method or substitution. I'm going to go with substitution. So of course we're going to make either x or y the subject of the formula. If you go with the first equation, we definitely will be working with fractions, which I don't want. So I'm going to work with equation 2. I take the y to the right and the 3x to the left. So y is equal to 2 minus 3x in this equation. 1, and let's call this equation 2. So what you're going to do is you're going to substitute. You substitute the equation 1 into equation 2. So wherever we see a y, we replace it with 2 minus 3x. Definite question in the exam. Eh? So it's 3x plus 2 into 2 minus 3x equals 30. So it's going to be 3x plus 4 minus 6x is equal to 13. So it's going to be 3x minus 6x is equal to 13 minus 4. 13 minus 4 is 9 and negative 3x. Divide by negative 3 both sides, so x is minus 3. Is that correct? What we do with that, we solve this back into equation 1. Why into equation 1? Because already we have y as the subject of the formula. 
So therefore, y is equal to 2 minus 3 into negative 3, which is 11. Question 3.1, it says consider the pattern. Negative 1, 2, 5, 8, and carries on to 1, 1, 6. Which means to say what? The last term in this pattern is 1, 1, 6. If this number pattern continues, 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 from minus 1, 2, 5, 8, uh, 11, 14, and so on, there will be a number 1, 1, 6 in that pattern. Okay? Which in this case is the last term of the pattern. The question says, write down the fifth and sixth term. So it's the next two terms of this pattern. Not so. So I'm adding three all the time. Not so. So you'll be adding three. So it's going to give you 11 and 4. So T5 is 11 and T6 is 4. Okay. Write down the general formula for the nth term of the sequence. The general formula is for, uh, follows the formula. Dn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. What's your a value? The first term. Negative 1 plus n minus 1 times 3. Get rid of the bracket. Negative 1 plus 3n minus 3. 3n minus 4. The general formula is 3n minus 4. You can test it. Let's test it for term 5. So 4. 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 minus 4 is 11. And as you can see, T5 is 11. Okay. The next question says, determine the value of the 33rd term of the sequence. Okay. So remember the general term, Tn, is equal to 3 and minus 4. So it's simply going to be 3.1.3. The 33rd term. So T33 is equal to 3 times 33 minus 4. 3 times 33 is 99. Not so. 99 minus 4 is 95. Then in the next question it says, 314. How many terms are there if in the sequence if the last term is so the nth term of the sequence is 116. In other words, you want need to calculate the value of n. So it's going to be 3n minus 4 is equal to 116. So you get over. So 3n is equal to 116 plus 4 is 120. Divide by 3 is 40. So what does that mean to say? There are 40 terms in the sequence. Okay? Well, the 40th term is 116. Question 2.2. Given the linear pattern 2x plus 2, 3x plus 4, and 5x plus 6. If x is equal to 0, calculate the numerical value of the fourth term. Hence, the nth term of the sequence. So two things you must find. You must find the fourth term and the nth term of the sequence. But x is equal to 0. So it's 2 times 0. Plus 2 is going to give us 2. 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 4 is 4. 5 times 0 is 0. Plus 6. six. Okay. So I do I move from one to the next? I'm adding 2 all the time. So, therefore, the fourth term, this is term 1, 2, 3, the fourth term is going to be 8. So, therefore, T4 is going to be 8. Hence, the term, the nth term of the sequence. The nth term following formula, Tn is equal to, Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 D. What's your A value? 2 plus n minus 1 times 2. That's going to give us 2n. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So the general term is 2. If you could see it's all even numbers, we know it would have been 2n. Okay? Let 
is 3.3.1 3.3.2 it says determine the largest value for in for which Tn is less than 116 3.2.2 one, one, 166 166 but what is Tn people? Tn is 2n so 2n must be less than 166 divide by 2 both sides so it must be less than 80 but did you answer the question? The question says determine the largest possible value for n for which n t n is less than 166. So what's the biggest value n can ever be? Can it be 80? Can't be 83 because is it equal to 83? No. Therefore n has to be equal to 82. As you can see it must be less than. You see less than uh, 83. You guys understand? Okay. The next one. Another another an algebraic pattern here. A linear pattern with a constant difference can be represented by determine the numerical value of it. So what is exclusive to linear patterns? It has a first common difference, not so? It has a common difference. So how do I move from one term to the next? It's going to simply be 3x plus 2 must be minus by x plus 3. Not so. Then, how do I get from uh, uh, that? Yeah, it's going to be 6x minus 1 minus 3x plus 2. Okay. So that simplifies to be 3x plus 2 minus x minus 3, which is 2x minus 1, so this is going to be 2x minus 1. On the other hand, you multiply that in, I'm going to get 6x minus 1 minus 3x minus 2. This is going to be 3x minus 3. So what do we know about a, a, a linear pattern? It has a, a first difference, which means to say that 2x minus 1 must be equal to 3x minus 3. So we solve for x. We get minus x is equal to minus 2. Therefore, x is equal to. Okay. That brings us to the end of question 3. You look at question 4, your financial maths. In January of 2019. The pound to rand exchange rate was 1 pound is equal to 18 rand and 18 cents. Zola traveled to United Kingdom to watch some WWE wrestling matches. The total cost needed for the trip is 3,569 pound. Convert this amount to rands. Okay, so you must convert a rand's amount into pounds. So what do we need? We need definitely the exchange rate. Okay, so one pound is equal to 18 rand and 18 cents. We have 3,569 pounds. So how do you get from 1 to 3, We multiply it, so it's 18,18. Multiply by, by, multiply by 3,569. There's 18 rand and 18 cents. Multiply by 3,569 rand. Gives you 64,884 uh, and 42 cents. Okay. Yeah, we are told that Sipo bought a brand new Ford Ranger in April 2015 on higher purchase at the cost of 3,000 
379,000. He agrees to pay 15% deposit and took out the loan under the remaining balance at an interest rate of 22.5%. How much deposit did Simpo um, pay? Simpo, 15% deposit. So the deposit, so it'll be your cash price, which is 379,000 rand, multiplied by 15%. Is three seven nine one two three times fifteen over hundred gives you fifty six thousand eight hundred and fifty. Fifty six thousand eight hundred and fifty rand. Okay. I must say that uh, Sipo isn't a teacher. No? So you're gonna get fifty six thousand eight hundred and fifty. Okay. And they said he did a trade in his own party. Okay, so the next question says Calculate the initial value of the loan. So the loan amount is your principal. It's going to give you the cash price, which is. 379,000 rand minus your deposit of 56,850. So um, 379,000 minus that answer, which is going to give you 322,550. So that's the loan amount. Calculate the value of the loan with interest in April 2019. Okay, so that follows the formula. A is equal to P into 1 plus I times E. How do I know is that formula? Because we spoke about I purchase. I purchase is simply interest. The P value, of course, the loan amount is 3,222 rand. The 3,022 uh, 3, rand and 3,000. No. 322,000. Sorry, man. 150 rand into 1 plus I is 22,5%. So it's 0, 0,225 times the amount of years from April 2015 to April 2019 is 4 years so it's going to be 32,000 322,150 into 1 plus 0, 0,225 times 4 gives you 612,085 612,085 Okay Then the question says Calculate these monthly installments Calculate the monthly installment so The monthly installment is going to be your A value over your N times 12 now, if it spoke about insurance as well, then after this calculation, I add the insurance. Okay? So, insurance doesn't draw an interest or anything like that. Calculate the monthly installment if it is paid off after four years. So, your A is 612,085 over 4 times 12, which is 48. Is that answer over 4 times 12? Gives you 12,751 rand and 77 cents. That's monthly installment. Okay?
Next question says the sum of money was invested for six years. Earlier interest rate of 6.7% per annum compound annually. The investment is currently worth 96,714.02 cents. Calculate how much was originally invested six years ago. So in other words, you must calculate your P-value. Not so? Which formula are we going to use? A is equal to P into 1 plus I to the exponent. In the end of 96,000. 714 and 2 cents is equal to P, which is what we're calculating into 1 plus I, 0, 0, 0,067 over 1. We just oh, angle at the, um, what's the name there? To the exponent, 6. You get P and 7 and divide this by its interest factor here. So it's 1 plus 0, 0, 0,067. Next one is six. Okay, so that cancels. So P is equal to it's gonna be ninety-six thousand. Seven hundred and fourteen rand point two cents. We divided by 1 plus 0, 0,06, um, 7, 6, 6, 9, 7, 6, 9. The exponent gives you 1,300. Why am I saying 6? Okay. They give you for, for 65,000. Okay, you guys understand? Yes. All right, so it brings us basically to graphs. Did I ask you to do this question as well? No. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video here and you guys can work on question 5 so long, okay? How much did you say? How much of the paper are we doing off? Alright, so the second half is due for tomorrow. Alright? If you have a problem with any of those sums that you answered and you tell me where you went wrong, you bring it to me now and we'll have a look at it, okay? Otherwise, you can work on, the, on tomorrow's own. Okay, so the balance of paper 1 is uh, for tomorrow.